This is Vanessa and Tim, and here is the news for today. The United Kingdom will support Timor-Leste in the economic health and nutrition sector. As she concluded her meeting with Jose Ramos Horta, the Timorese President of the Republic, the United Kingdom Minister to the Indo-Pacific and Marie Trevelyan said the United Kingdom will support economic development, health and nutrition of Timor-Leste. We are looking forward to working with the new government as we discuss ways to strengthen our partnership with Timor-Leste in support of its economic development, including on health and nutrition. During my visit, I will be launching the UK UNICEF Health Programme to support President Horta's national campaign to help combat child malnutrition. And Marie Trevelyan added more that the United Kingdom has a great commitment to support Timor Leste's accession to ASEAN, which Timor Leste has been working for 10 years to become the full member of this regional organization. I will also meet uh, with Prime Minister Shandana Guzmao and I have met with Foreign Minister Benito to discuss more about the UK's support for Timor-Leste's accession to ASEAN uh, so that the country can reap the benefits such as developing strong trade connections with major Asian economies and generating business and job opportunities for the Timorese people. Before that, the Timor-Leste president and the prime minister already has an agreement about Timor-Leste accession to ASEAN in 2025. And in 2022, last year, during the meeting in Cambodia, the ASEAN member states announced that they welcomed Timor-Leste accession to ASEAN with an observer status. Timorese are allowed to enter the United Kingdom should obey the law. The United Kingdom Minister to the Indo-Pacific, Anne-Marie Trebelian, met Timorese Prime Minister Karala Shanana Guzman to talk about bilateral ties between Timor-Leste and the United Kingdom. After the meeting, Anne-Marie said, the United Kingdom will always support Timor-Leste accession into the ASEAN, therefore the United Kingdom is open to Timorese who wanted to work in the United Kingdom but still need to fulfill the requirements and obey the laws. So we welcome uh, uh, Timorese uh, who come to work uh, in the UK and who uh, come through legal migration routes and the visa regime, we hope will continue to allow them to do that and we look forward to seeing uh, many in the years ahead being part of uh, the UK uh, economy as well as being able to support their families back home in doing so. Shanara Guzman, the Timorese Prime Minister, thanked the United Kingdom for all its support Timor Leste's development and offering the opportunity for Timorese to work and improve their life and economy by working in the United Kingdom. She came to discuss various issues, mostly about our accession to the ASEAN, as well as the issue of commerce and investment. This is the kind of expression exchanges between us, and I thanked her, as there has been some 20,000 Timorese are currently working in the United Kingdom, and also about the passport issue lately. She said it wasn't an issue at all. The real issue was there were some people who wished to enter United Kingdom illegally. Of course, it is not allowed. For sure, the United Kingdom will continue to accept Timorese to work in the United Kingdom. And she appreciated that Timorese are hard worker, and many are working in some area that we can benefit it from. In July this year, 2023, the United Kingdom government announced that Timorese who wants to work or travel to the United Kingdom are required to have the United Kingdom visa. Manny Pacquiao visits Timor-Leste to build bilateral ties between Timor-Leste and the Philippines. During the press conference after his meeting with the well-known international boxing champion, the Timorese president of Republic, Jose Ramos Horta, said many Pacquiao's presence in Timor-Leste is crucial as to promote sport, mainly the boxing sport, as well as to improve relations between Timor-Leste and the Philippines in the future. Primeiro, uh, Pacquiao and Nara are conhecidos in the world. Fatio and the world conhece. Many Pacquiao is well known to the world. Timorese youth knows him as well. The importance in his first visit is to encourage Timorese boxing sport, especially for Timorese youths whom fonts of it. Secondly, is to promote sport generally. Thirdly, to build people-to-people -people relations between the Filipino and the Timor-Leste, since it's a long-lasting relationship of both countries for many years. 
the Filipino only supports us. There were many Timorese whom studied in the Philippines before. Nasa un Catholic o ruan importante liu ia Asia mag Timor Leste o Filipinas. Many Pacquiao is pleased and thankful the Timor Leste's leader and the Timorese as well. During his visit, Pacquiao have met with Timor Leste boxing athletes to share experience in regards of mentality and technique and how to be a good athlete. This is my first time in uh, Timor Leste, and we we appreciated uh, your uh, your accommodation and a warm welcome to us. Um, I'm so thankful that uh, this is my first time to be here. I'm so happy that I experienced to be here in your uh, country. And I hope that this is not the last and we're planning, and I'm planning also to uh, uh, promote a boxing match here and also uh, put up a business. Okay, what we uh, talk about, uh, discuss with the president is our experience in the past and uh, his experience in Manila and also, <laughs> and also for boxers, uh, I'm going to uh, visit to uh, Buckingham Gym today and uh, give some tip about uh, uh, techniques or uh, plan for boxers. Um, that's what I can uh, contribute to the boxing uh, uh, boxers here in Timor Leste. On the same meeting, Timor Leste's president also invited Manny Pacquiao to participate in the celebration of Timor Leste's independence restoration and independence proclamation day ceremony next year. In November this year, 2023, Jose Ramos also will visit Philippines. Retno Marsudi said Indonesia will not back an inch in support for Palestinian statehood. Indonesia will not back an inch in our support for Palestinian statehood, said the country's foreign minister, Retno Lestari Priyansari Marsudi, during her speech at the United Nations General Assembly. We must uphold respect for international law, particularly fundamental principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity. A collective responsibility is also needed to the people of Palestine and Afghanistan. For, for far for too long, we have allowed our Palestinian brothers and sisters to suffer. Indonesia will not back an inch in our support for Palestinian statehood. In Afghanistan, Indonesia will do its utmost to help the Afghan people and ensure the right of women and girls are respected, including their right to education. Marsudi expressed her support for the citizens of Afghanistan, underlining the right to education for girls in the land governed by the Taliban. She also called out for support for the people of Myanmar, where a military junta has carried out a brutal nationwide crackdown on opposition since staging a coup on February 1, 2021. Philippines condemns Chinese floating barrier in South China Sea. The Philippines accused China's coast guards of installing a floating barrier in a disputed area of South China Sea, saying it prevented Filipinos from entering and fishing in the area. Handout video released by the Philippine Coast Guard showed several Chinese coast guard vessels near the floating barriers. Manila's Coast Guards and Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources strongly condemned China's installation of the barrier in part of the Scarborough Shoal. Commodore Jai Tariela, a Coast Guard spokesperson, posted on the ex-social media platform, formerly Twitter. The Chinese embassy in Manila did not immediately reply to the request for comment. China claims 90% of the South China Sea overlapping with the exclusive economic zones of Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Beijing seized the Scarborough Shoal in 2012 and forced fishermen from the Philippines to travel further for smaller catches. A rare endangered rhino was born at the National Park in Indonesia. The Indonesian Ministry of Environment and Forestry said from a social media, a rare endangered rhino was born at the National Park in Indonesia. 
The newborn female Sumatran rhino calf is the third successful pairing between its mother Ratu, a native from Waikambas National Park and Andalas, a male Sumatran rhino born on September 13, 2001 at the Cincinnati Zoo in the United States. The first two pairings had led to the births of Andatu, a male Sumatran rhino in 2012, and Delilah, a female in 2016. Last Saturday's birth took the Sumatran rhino population at the National Park to nine, a boost for the species. Sumatran rhinos are the smallest and most hirsute of the species. Fewer than 80 Sumatran rhinos are left in the world based on 2019 assessment of a threatened species. The mammal can grow up to 1.5 meters tall, weighing between 500 and 960 kilometers, and is known to communicate through a variety of means, ranging from whistling and to dung heaps. The Sumatran rhino, the only Asian rhino with two horns, is one of the most threatened species in the world due to poaching for its prized horns and habitat loss in its home of Indonesia's Sumatra Island. Hong Kong and Macau celebrate National Day with Grand Fireworks Shows. Magnificent fireworks shows lit up the skies of Hong Kong and Macau, China's two special administrative regions, during the evening hours to celebrate the 74th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. In Hong Kong, a total of 31,888 fireworks shoot up to the sky accompanied by triumphal music in a 23-minute long show that offers a visual feast to the local residents and tourists. First of all, I feel our country's prosperity as an ordinary citizen in such a spectacle as this. I also feel the dynamism and vitality of Hong Kong. I wish Hong Kong and our motherland a better future and greater prosperity. In Macau, the fireworks show was staged by the Chinese and Portuguese companies as part of the 31st Macau International Fireworks Display Contest. During the contest, fireworks companies from 10 countries around the world are scheduled to present 10 shows of fireworks and music within nearly a month. The explosion of vibrant colors felt crowds of onlookers. My family traveled all the way from Tsunhai City to watch the show. The fireworks were fantastic and magnificent. I can feel what a powerful motherland we have. I wish both the motherland and the Greater Bay Area would get better and better, said Liu Hao, a tourist from Guangdong province. China is currently in the midst of its Golden Week holiday, which includes the Mid-Autumn Festival and National Day holiday, lasting from September 29 to October 6. Thank you very much, everyone, and we will see you all again sooner. Have a nice and a lovely weekend. Bye.